Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. Uh, we are into the fifth week of this course and I really hope that our journey together has been interesting. Um, we have this very nice uh, new background image of this uh, satellite that is orbiting around the earth and as we had mentioned before um, the algorithms that we derive and analyze in this course uh, are frequently used to drive systems such as these yeah. so what we were uh, we have been doing uh, in this week and in the last uh, class also is basically um, looking at persistence of excitation and trying to connect it with stability of parameter identification algorithms all right so we've not yet seen any parameter identification algorithms um, but i assure you that the dynamics that we uh, sort of see in these lectures uh, appear in such systems very frequently right so these the parameter identification identifier structures are very similar to the sort of systems that we are going to see yeah so so we of course established the definition of persistence of excitation we uh, looked at an alternate exponential stability theorem um, then uh, we for the scalar case we sort of connected persistence excitation to stability that was a very nice uh, neat connection right uh, so it was very easy to establish in the scalar case or relatively easy to establish in the scalar case but uh, now we had moved forward to uh, trying to do something or trying to do something similar for the vector case and in order to do that we had started by stating uh, first of all an alternate exponential stability theorem right which um, sort of seemed like a um, you know, nice uh, variation over Lasalle invariance and Babelat's lemma, which we have been using to analyze uh, stability when we have a non strict Lyapunov function. Yeah, so here too it was the case that there was a non strict Lyapunov function. But then, because of this additional integral condition, we could in fact claim that uh, there is exponential stability. All right. Uh, right. So then uh, we went on to establish more uh, you know definitions which we are going to use subsequently the first is that of uh, uniform complete observability right so we define what is uniform complete observability and this is again now we have specialized to linear time varying systems right? so these are all only for linear time varying systems because we use uh, state transition matrices and such and we define what is the uh, uniform complete observability where we use something that looks like a observability gramian but is of course uh, you know a more strict requirement if you may than observability itself right and using this in fact we um, we now sort of want to state like a um, exponential stability theorem for linear time varying system so this is where we were until last time the final thing we talked about was uh, what is uniform complete observability and how it's connected to uh, observability itself right and um, and we of course want to use this in order to analyze time varying linear systems all right so so this is where we are today so we are basically going to start here so let me mark this as lecture 5.4 all right <clears throat> so uh, we want to now look at an exponential stability theorem for linear time varying systems assuming that <coughs> excuse me assuming that you know you have uh, a uco type of condition on the system 
all right so we again start with the same sort of input uh, sort of output system right? where the x is the states and y is the outputs um, and the exponential stability so basically we say that the origin is exponentially stable if and only if uh, for some c uh, such that this ac pair is uco there exists a symmetric matrix p yeah, such that the two, two equations 5.4 and 5.5 are satisfied what is 5.4 5.4 is simply saying something about the boundedness and positive definiteness right so if you remember we had actually connected um, for symmetric matrices we had connected uh, x transpose px basically the positive definiteness of this function right with the positive definiteness of the matrix p right? i hope you remember we did this as an example right and this is exactly what's happening here when we specialize to linear systems right uh, because all our lyapunov candidates always look like x transpose px we no longer talk about the positive definiteness of the function itself but we just look at the positive definiteness of this matrix because it's sufficient it's equivalent yeah for this sort of a construction positive definiteness of p corresponds to positive definiteness of this function x transpose px yeah so since they are identical uh, we we just start talking about just the matrix p itself right so so of course the equation 5.4 like i said this gives us positive definiteness this talks about decrescence now equation 5.5 says something about the derivative Right. Why does it say something about the derivative? Because just look at this carefully. If I take v dot of x, well, in fact, it is the v dot tx because p is a function of time. So I'll get uh, x transpose p x dot plus x dot transpose p x plus x transpose p dot x. Right, and I just substitute for the dynamics, and I'll get x transpose p a x notice that i have sort of excluded the time arguments but they are there plus x transpose a transpose p x plus x transpose p dot x all right so this is just obtained by substituting the dynamics here here and this is simply just x transpose p a plus a transpose p plus p dot all right so this is exactly what it is right this is exactly what it is this is basically saying v dot uh, so what we are essentially saying is that we are now talking about definiteness of v dot but not by looking at the entire function because we don't need to we only look at this matrix in between that's what this is right? that's what this is so what the second relation says so the left hand side is basically coming from the derivative of v dot like you can imagine and the right hand side is just the output matrix in a product right? so it's minus c transpose c notice that typically um, y is in rp so this is a p by n matrix right? so n p is less than n so typically c transpose c uh, which is basically an n by n matrix right is going to be a singular matrix right it is at best um, in a, at best it is going to be uh, negative semi-definite so the negative of that is negative semi-definite right so using this result in 5.5 what we have claimed is v dot uh, tx is less than equal to minus x transpose c transpose cx which is at most negative semi-definite right? which is at best negative semi-definite not negative definite because c is at most rank p p is usually less than n right and so the product can be at best rank p but it's of a dimension n right and again p is less than n so it's a singular inner product right? but because it's like like an inner product still it is like quadratic so therefore it has to be negative right? with the negative sign and so it's at best negative semi-definite so what we are claiming is that just with this negative semi-definite sort of a structure 
we can claim exponential stability right and how do we claim this we invoke our alternate exponential stability theorem right? because you notice that all you need is negative semi definiteness but of course you need some kind of a nice integral term happening right uh, right so we we of course have required that the v dot may be negative semi definite but we want that uh, integral of v dot some say some t to t plus delta should be uh, positive definite right so that's what this is alternate exponential stability theorem sorry sorry has to be negative definite i apologize has to be not positive different negative different so it has to be less than some minus alpha 3 norm x squared okay has to be less than minus alpha 3 times norm x squared right but that's not too difficult right why because let's say i do integrate this right let me try to do this right so let's actually write this out properly so i save some space we want this we want it to be we want the integral to be negative definite so how do I claim this? I simply integrate both sides of v dot txt dt. Uh, well, I need to use a different variable. v dot s x s ds t to t plus I don't know some cap t, right? And this is actually equal to integral from t to t plus cap t minus x transpose s c s uh, c transpose s c s uh, x s d s now using the state transition matrix i can write this as minus x transpose at small t t to t plus cap t uh, this is phi transpose um, s t c transpose s c s again phi s t d s times x at t now if you look at this integral here this is exactly the Gramian in UCO. Yes, yeah, exactly the Gramian in UCO. You can verify by looking here. Exactly this Gramian in UCO, right? And what do I know by the UCO condition? That this is in fact greater than some constant, greater than or equal to some beta one i. That is, this is positive definite. Yeah. So I'm going to simply use that. Right? This is some greater than some beta 1 i. So this is then less than equal to because there is a negative sign. So the greater than becomes less than equal to minus beta 1 x transpose t x t which is basically minus beta 1 norm x t squared. Right? And this is exactly what we wanted. This is exactly what we wanted for proving exponential stability that even though v dot is negative semi definite only so which is a weak thing right it is not negative definite right but the integral over some window is negative definite that it is bounded upper bounded by some minus beta 1 norm x t square right so this is a rather cool result right so this was possible only because we assumed that the ac pair is uco so we could actually compare with this definition here and use this set all right and of course because of the alternate exponential stability theorem so so i hope you sort of appreciate that we are actually using every piece uh, that we are introducing in order to come up with the result that we want all right so great so with this you you can have this exponential stability which is slightly weakened sort of requirement right you in a usual uh, linear system Lyapunov equation you would want this right hand side to be negative definite right but here it is only negative semi-definite yeah 
all right so the next sort of ingredient that we uh, want to introduce which is again something that we will um, uh, use subsequently is that of uco under output injection all right so the idea is that if i uh, so the basic result says that if i inject a um, function of the output a linear function of the output yeah into the state then uh, then it is not going to change the uco property so the uco property is invariant under output injection yeah so so this is what we claim that's what is this theorem yeah it says that if you have some matrix k a time varying matrix of course because we are looking at a time varying linear system yeah of course all of this will hold for constant uh, linear time invariant systems also because um, all these bounds are obviously very easy to obtain in those cases yeah so uh, if you look at a time varying game k of t if it if it so happens that uh, over a moving window so if you take a moving window uh, um, average or moving window integral yeah it is it remains bounded over all such windows yeah then uh, ac uco is equivalent to saying a plus kcc is uco all right okay so you see that this is actually an output injection right because if you look at equation 6.2 this is what it is the dynamics now contains an injection of the output yeah so what are we saying if we have the ac system to be that is only this system to be uco then if k has this nice boundedness property then this entire system is also uco okay so this is rather nice and of course there is a i mean we just use different notation for the bounds the bounds for ac were denoted beta 1 and beta 2 in equation 5.1 um but here we denote it with beta 1 bar and beta 2 bar just to differentiate because the bounds are going to be different of course yeah the bounds are not the same they are both still uco all right and of course here we are assuming that you know a and c matrices are piecewise continuous and so on and so on. yeah so some basic regularity assumptions of course all right great uh so this is a uh, sort of um i would say all the um, mechanism that you need in order to uh, look at you know exponential stability of of parameter identification systems all right at least the the sort of linear parameter identification systems that we are used to uh, that we will be used to dealing with you know soon enough yeah so uh so what are the ingredients that we have one is we have this nice exponential stability theorem for the linear system which is like a weakened version of the typical exponential stability theorem which will have some negative definite uh, right hand side and so on and then we also have this notion of uniform complete observability under output injection so what it says is that you uh, if you have like a nice bounded input bounded in this uh, bounded um, gain k met gain k which is essentially bounded in the sense of a moving average uh, then um, injecting an output with the gain in the dynamics is not going to uh, alter your uco property all right so this is what is rather nice yeah all right so um, we will try to do a, a little bit of um, or maybe one piece of this proof yeah today uh, and then subsequently we will try to wrap it up uh, in the next session yeah because we may not have uh, enough time today to complete the entire proof but anyway so let's first begin by stating the result right uh, what do we say we say that look at let phi be a vector signal now right? that it is a, it is taking time and mapping to some you know some rn Right. So let phi, and in this case, R n is exactly the dimension of the dynamics because of how the structure of equation seven point one is. Okay. Right? So suppose phi is mapping time to R n, yeah, which is the dimension of the state space, and is piecewise continuous. Yeah, basic. If phi is persistently exciting, yeah, as per our definition, then the origin is globally exponentially stable for this system, where alpha is just some positive. 
constant gain and there is some initial condition x naught all right so this so the first thing that you want to uh, sort of notice is that equation 7.1 yeah that you see here is not too different uh, with from the scalar example right here we had just a minus a squared because it was a scalar but now we are looking at minus alpha phi phi transpose right just because it's a vector case just because it's a vector case so uh, right right so of course you notice that this phi phi transpose is an n by n matrix now yeah and also you notice that uh, instant instantaneously it's only rank 1 yeah so phi phi trans uh, in fact this is the small phi i apologize phi phi transpose instantaneously is at most rank 1 why because <coughs> phi itself is a vector so rank 1 at most right and therefore phi phi transpose the product cannot have rank more than the constituent matrices right so the phi phi transpose which is an n by n matrix imagine i have 100 states yeah and i but phi phi transpose is just rank one or just rank one okay so remember this so this is this is why p is such a nice condition because it sort of says that you know if you remember the p condition it's going to say that uh, if you have integrate this from t to t plus cap t and you have phi tau phi transpose tau d tau then it is bounded on both sides by some constants mu1 and mu2 yeah so so basically although instantaneously it's obvious that it's only rank one therefore there are many possibly many eigenvalues at zero right but if i integrate it on this moving window then we are saying that the rank becomes full all right all right great so now we understand the setup of the problem so the next thing that we want to do is to obviously just analyze the stability and how do we do this in this course we take a lyapunov candidate function or a candidate lyapunov function right so of course this is a candidate not a lyapunov function but a candidate lyapunov function yeah why is it a valid candidate we should remind ourselves like every time we see a function v that it's a valid um, candidate function one it is c1 this is once uh, continuously differentiable no problem it's just a quadratic right we just have to use uh, vector principles to take the derivative that's all right and two it is um, positive definite and in fact in fact it's radially unbounded right so this is in fact uh, radially unbounded right? because again it's just a square what it, it plays the role of x square yeah, whatever x square is signifying in scalar uh, systems x transpose x is signifying the same in uh, you know vector systems right? when x is in rn okay so then we of course carefully take the derivative along trajectories right and it's very simple it basically is just x transpose x dot so basically i get something like twice x transpose x dot and if you substitute for x dot right which is uh, minus alpha uh, yeah you start to get something like this right? and this is of course uh, the square of phi transpose x right? because it's like a again like a inner product right or phi transpose x with it that uh, of phi transpose x with itself right so this is just that so i can of course write it in this way but nice compact form right <clears throat> now of course we write the integral because of course we have we want to use this alternate stability theorems right yeah. so we want to of course compute the integral of this guy yeah notice uh, that we are still in the regime of linear systems right so this is still a linear system although it is non-linear in phi but it's just a function of time and it is linear in the state so whenever we are talking about linearity 
in a state space system we are talking about linearity with respect to the states so with respect to the state it is linear so it's a it's a linear system all right maybe non linear in time but we don't care about that okay great so now we just compute the integral because remember that uh, this alternate exponential stability theorem uh, required us to do so right that is compute the integral and that's what we are trying to do here right so <clears throat> If I integrate from t to t plus cap t, um, I think there is a bracket missing here, right? Of v dot d tau, we just write the expression right here. And now, all our subsequent uh, analysis is essentially going to be uh, trying to bound this guy. Yeah, our subsequent analysis is to be bounding this person, this this particular quantity, right? And why are we doing that again the alternate exponential stability theorem requires that we have like a nice upper bound on this quantity on the left yeah so that's exactly why we are going to try to bound this quantity all right how do we begin we begin from the pe assumption right because phi is pe therefore the system x dot is phi trans 0 comma phi transpose t is uco what is this system when I whenever I write this kind of a notation this system is the first piece is indicating the a matrix and the second piece is indicating the C matrix okay so the system is x dot equals to 0 and y is phi transpose T X this is the system now we are saying that this system is uniformly completely observable okay why so we know that this is the p condition on phi okay, so this is the p e on phi yes i'm going to nicely mark it okay so this is the p condition on phi and what is the UCO of this? So, so UCO condition will be I have to take the integral from t to t plus cap t. I have to do phi uh, say st uh, with the transpose. Uh, so phi is the state transition matrix then i have to take uh, c transpose right so which is basically phi tau and then c which is phi transpose tau and the state transition matrix again yeah please do not unfortunately we are using the similar looking notation for the state transition matrix and this function uh, but please do not get confused this is the small phi yeah and this is the capital phi okay so this there is a bar here yeah this this denotes the state transition matrix it is standard notation and unfortunately we have chosen this notation for the pe functions yeah and this is also sort of standard of course we could have gone with something else but uh, it's done now so yeah bear with it do not get confused between these two this is just the signal that we are saying is pe right and this is the state transition matrix now the question is what is phi s t for the system yeah x dot is zero so what do you know there is x t is equal to x zero for all t greater than or equal to t zero right so therefore the state transition matrix is in fact identity okay so i hope all of you understand this yeah if not please revise what is the state transition matrix yeah so the state transition matrix is in fact identity and if i plug it here i will simply get t t plus cap t phi tau phi transpose tau d tau yeah so this is exactly the matrix involved in the uco or basically the uco gramian matrix and this is exactly identical to this guy yeah so by virtue of persistence 
I have UCO of this system. All right, great. So what have we looked at today? So what we uh, looked at is basically now we um, sort of looked at a few more additional concepts, which is UCO under output injection. Yeah, and of course one exponential stability theorem for linear time varying systems. And now we are starting to connect it with our, um, you know, uh, proof of exponential stability of parameter identifier systems under persistence. Yeah. So we have just started the proof and of course we are going to uh, subsequently finish it up also. Yeah. In the upcoming sessions. All right. That's where we stop. Thank you.